Welcome back to Long Crime, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. A lot to talk about here on the program today. First, we're in Verdict Watch in a big case, and we're recapping another major trial that we covered here on the network. So you know what I'm going to say. Let's get started. That is just absolutely tragic. I want to break some of this down right now. And joining me is trial attorney Ann Bremner. Ann, great to have you here on Law and Crime. I'm so happy we find ourselves together again. I know, me too. Thanks for having me. Of Such course. A uh, I'm glad we have an opportunity to talk about this case. It's a difficult case. Um, having family members, such as the victim's husband, testify at an early point in the trial, what is the strategy there? What is the jury to think? Well, it's, of course, primacy, recency, and then, you know, the, the, I mean, just watching him, it's emotional. You kind of tear up for him, and I think that it humanizes her. It, you know, puts her right before the jury through his eyes, and it shows a tremendous loss that everyone suffered by her loss and thereby. And, abs and also that he is not responsible for this at all. We yeah. see a lot of cases where you have the disappearance and murder of a young woman, and you could think, oh, well, let's go down to the spouse or the boyfriend. And clearly, this is not the case. They have the man who, in himself, uh, admitted to what he did. Now, I just want to let our viewers know, uh, there's some activity in the courtroom. There is a jury question. Maybe we can jump in. Maybe we can jump in. Let's go to court. What you're seeing right now is a review of this jury question. Uh, I think the defense is looking at it, too. Interesting. Interesting to see a jury question. Not sure what this question might be about or what they might be tangling with. They have a lot of charges to consider here for Mr. Nelson. It's a first-degree murder charge. They could also find him guilty of lesser includeds there. Uh, there's also a kidnapping, carjacking, and tampering with a witness charge. Uh, let's go back live, and we'll learn what's happening. So apparently the jury just wants to hear more from the defendant. They've asked two questions. One, they want a copy of the transcript from his testimony from yesterday. And two, they want these copies of these uh, apparent letters that he wrote to various individuals now. And there's a question about what they're going to be able to get back. Obviously, with right. the transcript, they're, they're not going to get the transcript, but they can have parts of the testimony read back to them. And now it's a question of whether or not these letters are even in evidence. The question I have, of course, is... What does this tell you about what the jury's thinking? What issue do you think they're wrestling with here? Well, they're looking at his defense, of course, and whether or not he's credible, and they're probably disagreeing as to the specifics of what he testified to, if they want a readback. But that having been said, I think we all know from television, there's always a readback request, you know, and as a trial lawyer all these years, I've never had one happen. <laughs> the judges are like, rely on your collective memory. And then with respect to the items that aren't in evidence, their stipulations, I think the judge is right. You know, you're not going to send back something that's not in evidence. But they're obviously either at a disagreement on that or looking at the defense and just being thorough. Is this a good thing for the defendant or a bad thing for the defendant? Because there I, are complicated question, legal questions here. Yeah, I, I, I think it may be, may be a bad thing, i.e. someone's picking it apart. Yeah, look, I mean, are you surprised that they didn't ask for anything in relation to his alleged confession to detectives because at one point during his testimony yesterday he said well just go back to the confession go back to the confession see what i said there yeah they, they don't they don't want to hear it i mean they're basically looking at what he testified to under oath in front of them and i think that they're it's not a good sign for him you know and it's a very bizarre defense at any in any event but i think they're trying to look at it and maybe reject it are they also trying to get into his mind frame and these letters uh that he apparently wrote or allegedly wrote i mean we we talked about how earlier uh, in this case he wrote a letter to the judge that was something to read, I'll tell you that much. I mean, are they trying to get to an insight into him about justification? Because he believes he was justified and did nothing wrong. Well, you know, the fact is, legally, he can't say that, I mean, at least in my opinion. And But the fact is, he's saying that to the jury, and that's his defense. It may work later in mitigation, you know, in the sentencing phase. But they're trying to get into his mind and take a look at as if as any of this is reasonable. and. I just think often with this, yeah. Jesse, you've got jurors disagreeing back there and someone's saying... A absolutely. Right. It's, and it's hard to know exactly what they're thinking. I wish I was a fly on the wall. Let's just jump back live and we're seeing what's going on in court. All right, as they sort out what the jury can see and not see, Anne, are you a bit surprised? I mean, I was listening to this testimony yesterday and I was thinking the jury was going to come back uh, with a guilty verdict within 10 minutes. I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if that was the result. But clearly right. they're wrestling with something here. Yeah, you know, I mean, you see all different kinds of things with juries. Some are really hardworking. I've had juries that put all the evidence, they taped it all up on the wall. You know, I've had them go through, and I haven't had one write haiku poetry about the case on the wall, of all things. But so you don't always know when they're being really thorough 
whether they're really leaning toward guilt or innocence. But I'm with you, Jesse. Um, I thought they could, like a revolving door, go in and come out and say guilty um, from the jury room, given his testimony. Well, it seems it's going to be one of those days where we just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, that was what happened yesterday. Who knows what we can expect today? But I you know what I'm going to say. Stay tuned here on Long Crime, and we'll all find out together. Okay, so that was the decision right there. And I'm back here with Ann Bremner. Is that the correct call by the court? Absolutely. And, you know, really, I don't think jurors, you know, they're always disappointed when they get this kind of information from a judge because they expect that they're going to be able to look at things again, hear things again, and everything else. But he's correct. If those items are not in evidence, they shouldn't be considered by the jury. I mean, period. And the right. second part, with respect to the reading, you know, or transcript is if you want something specific, tell us what it is. So, 100% correct. And they have a lot to consider. Uh, and I got to ask you, we haven't had an opportunity to talk about this case. What did you make of the defendant testifying yesterday? A train wreck. I mean, <laughs> right? That's oh, about that's the first it? thing. That's know, all? Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, well, he's just bizarre. I mean, I mean, self-serving, um, not credible, um, offensive, um, being, you know, acting like a victim. I guess that what you've got up now on the screen, once you kick a dog enough times, they bite back. Really? And yep. you do this? I mean, come uh, on. I'm going to throw in one more. Uh, okay. Terrifying. It was really scary yes. to hear. Because it's one of the things I said yesterday, and I've been saying it as well today, that it's almost getting into the insight of a killer. Again, assuming that he did this, assuming this is all true right. and he's ultimately found guilty, it is getting right. into the insight of a person who kills another individual. And I can only imagine that this might be what goes on in the minds of people who do this, this feeling of yeah, feeling yeah. justified and that they're blaming everybody else. Yeah, I mean, like Silence of the Lambs, you, know, you kind of see the monster there. And, and the fact that he would think it's justified, you know, because he's just been beaten down so many times, and then just randomly goes after this wonderful woman, is just, you know, creepy. The creep factor is so high, but also just the horror in watching someone like him say these things under oath. And a lawyer that let him go up there, you know, shame on them, too. Well, that was interesting because the defense's closing argument, they have to, unfortunately, use what the yes. defendant said. And they were making it seem, look, he had a grudge against wealthy people. He was angry at the government for, for his yeah. set of circumstances. And he didn't necessarily intend to kill Jennifer Fulford. That wasn't his intended target. She just right. was, as he claimed, collateral damage. Does that right. help them in a pre in, in a premeditated uh, first-degree murder charge? Maybe it would actually help them. You tell me. Only if you've got a jury that would that would have that kind of mentality, or at least one juror, of course, to hang the jury. But I, I just can't imagine anybody buying that. And the fact is, collateral damage. I mean, what did she do to deserve this? And it looks more premeditated, doesn't it? When he says it was a product, you know, of his victimization, of his being victimized, that he's somehow justified. Doesn't that help prove premeditation? That he thought he should do this or could do this or was justified in doing this? Well, let me ask you this. Maybe we, we can obviously talk about how negative his testimony was. Right. But then again, the prosecution took off the burglary charge from the jury's deliberations. Is that in light of what he testified to yesterday, where he seemed to suggest that he didn't break into this house, but that she, he was invited in and maybe under the, the law of burglary, it doesn't fit that definition. So is the prosecution thinking about what he said and taking what he said is true? That's a great point, Jesse. Excellent point. If they are, they shouldn't have done that because they're just basically giving some a period at the end of the sentence of the defense, which is there's credibility here. Right. Like, oh, hey, okay, that's what he says. OK, then we're going to go ahead and dismiss this one charge. I think it's a big mistake, don't you? I, I, I don't know why they took it off. I mean, there's I one part of me that says, hey, listen, after what he just testified to, throw everything you have at them. But the other right. point is they're very careful. I mean, look, the jury now has a, a determination about first degree murder. Uh, they can also find him guilty of first degree murder under the felony murder rule. That would be my right. understanding that if they find him guilty of the kidnapping charge right. and they say, well, he murdered her uh, in the course of the kidnapping, then that's right. first degree. Now, here's the other option. They could find him guilty of the lesser charge of second degree murder with a weapon or second degree murder or manslaughter with a weapon or manslaughter. What do you mm -hmm. think about those other options? I don't know that they really fit on this evidence. I guess maybe it's what he's trying to get to so he doesn't go into the penalty phase. But, um, it, you know, I think any good attorney who's defending someone like this is going to want to have those options of the lessers. That's a win. It's going to be a big win to get anything other than murder one. Felony murder, 
so easy to prove. I mean, as right. your viewers probably know, but when you're looking at you know, rape, robbery, kidnapping, those kind of enumerated felonies, if you engage in those and somebody dies, you, you know, you're guilty of felony murder. And it's just predictable that someone could die, and it is murder one. Yep, absolutely. Well, we're going to have to see what happens for this man, right. and we may get a verdict later today. We're keeping a very careful eye now on that courtroom feed after these jury requests. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, a lot more to discuss.